Good morning, everyone. Uh, checking in here on Saturday morning. I'm going to take a look at the cruising class and see how they did overnight. So I've got the uh, race tracker up and, and open here, and I've actually backed up the play to uh, 10 o'clock last night. So I figured we'd just watch it real quick and we could see how they progressed over the night. Um, so hit and play there. And as you'll see, um, they continued their path. As we, as we left them last night, they were steady speeds, moving really well right up the rum line, and it looks like that continued um, right through the night here. So they're just cruising up, not many moves being made, more or less just kind of going straight up the lake. Uh, you can see daybreak there, and actually we're going to pause it just for a second. And uh, what you're going to see here is uh, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning, as the screen shows here. And the boats up at the top here, the, the faster boats are getting up north a little bit quicker, obviously, than the slower boats. And what they're finding as they get up here is there is possibly a little bit more pressure, but more specifically, a, sh a little bit of a shift. So you'll start to see some moves being made. And the reason for this is because the wind, as you see going up the lake here, it's a little bit southeast. And these little triangles, they start to curve around to the south. And what that does to the boats is it actually creates a, uh, a, an, a wind angle that does not allow them to quickly go up the rum line. So it's going to make them act. And uh, this is where the race gets kind of interesting, because actually boats start to decide whether they want to go uh, out in the lake or they want to jive back and forth along the rum line to keep that rum line true, or take a shot at going into shore, seeing if they can find some thermal, thermal activity there to give them a little wind uh, in tight to the beach. So I'll hit play again, and uh, let's, let's watch what they do. You'll see some separation here. So as they cruise up, right about 9 o'clock, you start to see some boats kind of turn in towards shore, others jiving out into the lake. And um, that's just what I was speaking of. So decision time for this fleet. Uh, now they get to, to play the tactics. And they're, you know, they're a day into the race now, so the, the weather reports are not as fresh maybe in their minds. Some of them may be getting them on the boat. But now they have to really uh, take the wind that they're in and uh, stick to a plan. So pretty cool stuff. We'll see how this plays out for a lot of the boats. Um, let's check the leaderboard now as it stands so we can see how this progresses as these, uh, these boats go different directions. And we'll start in cruising one. We'll look at uh, Chai Duan. They're in first place. Um, and as you can see, pay attention here to the right side. You can start tracking to see how close these boats really are. Because here they're, you, can, you can see who's in front of who, but here at the corrected elapsed time, you can actually see who's winning based on corrected time. So this is their duration, or their, the elapsed time for the whole race as it's projected. So one day, 11 hours, 13 minutes, that means that they're 12 minutes ahead of Roxy. So we got a pretty tight race here in Cruising 1. Uh, top three positions are all within 15, 16 minutes of each other. So that's, uh, that's a real tight race. So we'll see how that goes as we move into the day today. Cruising 2, uh, Hope has taken over the lead. Looks like they got about a half hour lead on corrected time over Intangible. And Elysium, is, as Elysium 2 has dropped down to third, but not out of it by any stretch. So the, another tight race in cruising too.